once again we thank you for your word Lord even as we sit under the teaching of your word we open up our hearts before you we yield ourselves to you O God and ask that Lord you will give us eyes to see you will give us ears to hear and a heart that understands Lord we yield ourselves to you and our prayer and our desire is that you would have your own way in our lives we want to thank you and we want to bless you in Jesus name and everybody says Amen. We may kindly have our seats. I uh, want to welcome each and every one of you. i um, happy to see Magda. Magda just wave. Magdalene is a friend of mine of many years. And um, for those, uh, the people in the, 
who are going through the faith different faith driven entrepreneurship uh, program this is a training for business people she is my co facilitator and uh, so the ones in that class that is the magdalene you have been dealing with and we are glad to have you magda karibu sana and she came with a visitor you visit her just wave hata kama sijui jina yako just wave we are glad to have you karibu sana this is house of grace church rwaka and we love visitors feel at home feel at the feet of jesus and we believe that you will be blessed and ministered to even as we continue i also want to appreciate the ministry team my ministry team for holding fort while i was away also want to appreciate uh, michael moreithi for taking the challenge and ministering the word so uh, powerfully i was so blessed can we give him a clap i can't see him but he did such a good job i mean i was so impressed with the confidence you know and he was able to just like pick up from where i mean like what we have been uh, i mean talking about i mean it was so beautiful i am so grateful for the whole of my ministry team for just being there and holding the fort uh, some of some they are disappearing like this needs to happen so that i can also be sure can things go on when i am not around and one of the things i was able to tell yeah church can go on even when i am not around i mean it it gives me joy to know that i have raised sons amen amen and so uh, one of the things i have been telling uh, the team is that i am very very consciously and deliberately raising sons amen we are not going to be the only ones one of these days we are going to have a house of grace uh, rwaka somewhere else birthed from here are we together Yes, we are going to have branches. Uh, we are not just ourselves here, no. We are looking forward to growth and to expansion. And one of the ways of training people is putting them on the hot seat and allowing them to come and stand here. When Muredi stood here, nilisikia akisema grace imeisha kwa migu, but he still managed. He still made it even after the grace got finished. He still he still made it and i'm so i mean i'm so proud of uh, of 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 the team that god has has given me they are coming up very very well one more time can we celebrate my team my ministry team yeah they are doing a good job and we thank god for each and every one of them so we have been talking about working with god we have been talking about working with god and we have been um, uh, doing a series Today we are doing part 8. Last time I was here uh we were talking about working with God as a congregation. Uh one of the thing God spoke to us in the month of August was that he wants to us to begin to work very very closely with him and he used the words of us working with him as a friend and we've been talking a lot about working with god and we have looked at different uh, dimensions uh, of i mean of working with god and uh, two weeks ago i began uh what i was calling working with god as a congregation and we are going to be learning things how do we work with god how do we journey with god as a corporate body and we are looking at acts chapter 7 verse 38 that say that says this is he that was in the church in the wilderness and we say the church began in the wilderness with the angel which spoke to him in the mount sinai and with our fathers who received the lively uh oracles to give uh uh and to us that is in the king james version when you read it in the new king james it says this is he who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on mount sinai and with our fathers the one who received the living oracles to give to us and we say that in the above scripture uh stiffing uh makes it very very clear that the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness were in fact a congregation so the congregation or the church does not begin where we see it in the book of acts uh the so we we say that there would be like a new testament church but in the in an old testament uh paradigm so we say their journey out of egypt was a journey from bondage and slavery and we're looking at that during our uh, our interactive discipleship session through the wilderness and finally into the promised land is also a picture and a representation of our spiritual journey 
And then Paul went on to say in the book of uh, First Corinthians, Paul said that they simply served as an example that journey we were supposed to learn from them. The things that the children of Israel went through were written in scripture as our example so that we can be able to learn um, uh, uh, from them. First Corinthians 10 Verse 1 to 6 and verse 11 says, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud. And it, of course, it's talking about the children of Israel. When it is referring there to our fathers, it's talking about the children of Israel. They were all under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now this thing became our examples to the intent that we should not last after evil things as they also lasted. Now all these things happened to them as examples and they were written for our, our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. And so it is okay for us to go back, look at that journey and see what principles can we be able to pick? What principles can we be able to learn? And last uh, Two weeks ago, we looked at the, the, the principle of the presence of God. And one of the things we were able to say is that the children of Israel, when they were in the wilderness, they were, had the presence of God with them during the day and during the night. The pillar of cloud led them during the day. I mean, the cloud led them during the day and during the night, the pillar of fire led them. And we came to the conclusion that we need the presence of God. We need to be covered 24-7 with the presence of God, wherever you are. So whether you are in church, whether you are at home, whether you are in your business uh, uh, premises, whether you are at your workplace, you need the presence of God. And we are saying there is nothing like, let's now enter into the presence of God. Because I always ask, so where were we before that now we need to enter? Are we together? So we need, we said, we are covered 24-7. If there is anything you need in your life, if there is anything you need to desire, anything you need to... God jealously is the presence of God. And we looked at and saw when Adam and Eve sinned, what happened? They stepped out of the presence of God. Cain, when he killed his brother, we were looking at that, I think a month or two ago. He, the word of God says that he went away from the presence of God. So if there's anything that we need as a people, it is the presence of God. Today we want to look at another principle in Exodus chapter 16 from verse 11 to 20. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel. Speak to them saying, now what happened, uh, this complaints is talking about what happened, the journey of the children of Israel. And I explained that last time, God was revealing himself to them because these people had been in Egypt for very many years. And they had been worshipping other gods. So they did not know Jehovah God. So before, instead of taking them from Egypt where they were worshipping idols, direct to the promised land, they would just have continued to worship the same idols. God had to reintroduce himself to them and, I mean, cause them to know him. And one of the ways of getting to know him, instead of calling them in a place and telling them, I am Jehovah God, I, 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 and this is who I am, and this is what I am going to be doing for you. And, uh, you know, instead of giving them a lecture, he decided to take them through a journey, through a process, through which he was revealing himself uh, to them. So what happened in this journey, the first time, the first challenge they found is that they got to a place and they got thirsty and they did not have water and they cried out to God and they got water. So this second time they get to a place now and they feel hungry. So they started to complain and started, and of course, every time something went wrong, every, they would go back to Moses, begin to complain and tell Moses, why, ask Moses, why did you take us from Egypt? Why did you not let us die there? Why did you bring us here into the wilderness to kill us? So at this point, what is happening? They are hungry and they want food. 
So this is where the script, this scripture is beginning. So verse 11 is saying, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, I have heard the complaints of the people of, of Israel. Speak to them saying, at twilight you shall eat meat and in the morning you shall be filled with bread and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. You have asked for food, yes, I have heard. So I will give you food. So what is he saying? I will give you uh, food. In the morning you will be filled with bread. I mean in, uh, yeah, in the morning you will be filled with bread. In the evening you will eat meat. So it was that quails came up at the evening and covered the camp. And in the morning the dew lay all around the camp. And when the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance as fine as the frost of the, on the ground. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, this is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's need. Now I want you to note the instructions that were given. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's need. One armor for each person according to the number of persons. Let every man take for those who are in his tent. Then the children of Israel did so and gathered some more, some less. So when they measured it by omas, he who had gathered much had nothing left over. He who had gathered little had no luck. Every man had gathered according to each one's need. Verse 19. And Moses said, let no one leave any of it till morning. Notwithstanding, even after saying all that, they did not heed, they did not listen, they did not obey to the instructions which Moses had given. But some of them left part of it until morning. And it bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. We want to get, learn a few principles from that uh, portion of scripture um, in Exodus chapter 16. Now manna is what sustained the children of Israel throughout their journey in the wilderness. So at this point, it is very, very early in the journey. And after complaining about food, God made sure they had provision. And how God sustained them is that he sustained them throughout their journey. Now, the first principle I want us to learn is that manna is a spiritual picture of the word of God. Bread. Everywhere you see bread, everywhere you see bread in the word of God, it does not just talk about physical bread. Don't just think in terms of Elliot and Superloaf and Broadway, whatever bread you eat. Don't just think in terms of food for the stomach. In scripture, bread represents the word of God or spiritual nourishment. And we know that spiritual nourishment comes from the word of God. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, uh, when Jesus is taken, uh, led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, the first temptation he got, uh, the, the devil, of course, knowing that he was angry, hungry, comes to him and tells him, if you are the son of God, then turn these stones into bread and eat. What a wonderful suggestion, especially when you have been fasting for a long time, and especially when you are very, very, very hungry. And you come. And notice the way he comes. He does not come and tell him you are hungry. And so because you are hungry, turn the stones into bread. He comes by first challenging his position and his identity. And so he tells him, if you are the son of God, then change these stones into bread and eat. And uh, we are want to look at the answer in verse 4. But he, said, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So in our journey with God, if there is anything we need, 
It is the word of God. That is the only way we are going to survive. And so Jesus was saying, we don't just live by eating physical food, but we live by what comes from the mouth of God, what God speaks. So that means we have to be in a position. We have to be in a, in, I mean, in, in, in a place where we are hearing God. And that is why God began by talking to us. What we need is his presence. What we need is his presence. And why we need his presence is because we need to, uh, I mean, continuously, we need to keep hearing uh, from him. So as long as they ate, their, uh, they ate it, their clothes and their shoes did not wear out. As long as they ate the manna, the word of God says their clothes and their shoes did not wear out. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3 to 4. So he humbled you. This is the children of Israel who are being told. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone. Jesus was quoting this scripture. That's why he says it is written. But man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Verse 4. Your garments did not wear out on you. Nor did your foot swell these 40 years. 40 years, God sustained them. God nourished them. God fed them. Took care of their basic needs. This one, actually, when you think in terms of food, it is normally said that basic need, I mean, I mean basic, the basic needs of a human being are what? Food, shelter, and, and clothing. So God took... Of their, took care of their basic needs. In Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 21. The same thing is echoed. For uh, 40 years. You sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked nothing. That means their basic needs were met. As they journeyed with God in the wilderness. They lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear. And their feet did not swell. And you know some of them. Started off the journey when they were young. So the shoe you started with, what happened? Huh? Now if you begin to think, huh? now think, you know this church we say we think, we think, we don't leave our brains at the door, we think. Sawa. So I want you to imagine, some of them when they began the journey they were young. So what does that mean? The shoe they wore, because the, in the wilderness there are no supermarkets. Huh? In the wilderness, there is no butter shop. Hakuna butter. Sawa, sawa. So, for all those years, what happened? Eh? What was happening to the foot? Not even just to the foot, even the body. What was happening? Are we together? God took care of everything, even those fine details. I'm sure even as they left, they had not thought of details of what are we going to be wearing? Where are we going to be getting other clothes? Because those things, you won't find them in the wilderness. So God took care of that. So their clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell. 40 years. Some of you, you don't wear a shoe for more than a year. Huh? Ladies especially. And you don't even survive with one pair. You have a number. Huh? These ones, God sustained them. Are we together? So back to our story. What are we saying? Your spiritual and your natural sustenance. The resources you need in the journey, in your walk with the Lord. In your processes of life, in your marriage, in your parenting season, in your career, in your businesses, in the battles of life are found in the Lord. Are we together? Your resource, what you need at any point in your life, where is it found? It is found in the Lord. And let me tell you, God takes care of every detail. 
So that even that time when you have lost your job, God knows you have lost your job and he knows how you are going to survive. Have you ever heard of anybody who died because they had lost their job? Is there any record? Is there anybody who knows any record of somebody who died because they lost their job, they had no food, they died of hunger? Have you ever heard of anybody because their business went down? They literally died of hunger. Have you ever heard? God knows it has happened. And he has put systems in place to sustain you. Even when the job is not there. Even when the business is not there. Where he is. That is where you are supposed to be. If you are going to survive. You see? It's like it's pushing us back. To the presence of God. You can't do with the, without the presence of God. You can't do without God. Like I was telling some people in the morning. I went somewhere and ministered somewhere this morning. Early this morning. And I was telling those people. It, it was some group of staff. I was telling them they need God. You cannot do without God. And that's why you normally hear me saying. Without God I am nothing. I have nothing and I can do nothing. Because my total and full dependence is on him. You will have to keep feeding on his word for spiritual nourishment, for strength and energy, for the courage and the boldness. Many of us are very, very good. We are very, very disciplined when it comes to taking care of our bodies in terms of food. Some of you, if you one hour passes beyond your eating time, you literally begin to tremble and to shake. I used to have one such person in my house. The, when they would get hungry, they would literally <laughs> begin to tremble. Why? Hunger. So we are so careful. Breakfast, lunch, and supper. And the privileged ones, like Mitungu. Kuna kuanga na four o'clock. Na ten o'clock. Ah? We are so careful. But do we do that when it comes to the word of God? I want you to ask your neighbor. When is the last time you sat down and read and fed? Don't even talk about reading. Ask your neighbor. When did you last sit down consciously and deliberately to feed from the word of God? Don't wait for an answer. Nikiulizo tu. Nikiulizo. I want to see people talking. Can you talk to somebody? Ask them, when did the last time you consciously and deliberately sat down to feed from the word? Don't wait for an answer. And don't give anybody an answer. Nikiulizo? Nikiulizo too? Are we together? God told them, in the morning, you will be filled with bread. In the evening, you will be fed with meat. And God made sure there was enough. It was always there. It was always provided. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. After Moses died, God comes to Joshua and tells Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. Arise now and take these people over the Jordan. The next thing he tells him in verse 8, he tells him, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. What was he told? He needed the word Day and night. Remember the pillar of cloud during the day? I mean the cloud during the day. The pillar of night during the night. And we say it. That means 24 hour coverage. With the presence of God. Now. Here. He gave them something to eat in the morning. And he also gave them something to eat at night. What does that mean? He also covered. 24-7 that they were nourished. Because if you eat in the morning, in the evening you will be hungry. True or false? Unless you are fasting. 
Unless you have decided to do a partial fast of one meal a day where you just eat in the morning. Or you don't eat from morning, you just eat in the evening. So he told them in the morning I will give you what? Bread. And in the evening, uh, in the evening I will give you what? Meat. Now what was Joshua told? This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night so how is it we go three months I have come in peace <laughs> I have come in how is it we, we take three months before you consciously and deliberately sit down with the Bible to feed spiritually. Not to get a someone to go and preach. To do what? Feed. Feed your spiritual man. Meditate on it what? Day. That you may observe to, co to do according to all that is written. That is why we are always uh, in Kikuyu we talk about Makua na Marioka. That's why we are always falling and rising. We are always falling in sin. Do you know why? The answer is there. Because we are not meditating on the word of the Lord day and because if you meditate on it day and night, what will happen? You will, uh, you will observe to do according to all that is written in it. It will be in your mind. Some of you, the Holy Spirit has nothing to work with. One of the work of the Holy Spirit is to convict you of sin. And what he does, he reminds you what the word of God says. So if you don't even know what the word of God said, that is why we are always falling and rising. And some of us fall and wallow in the mud. You know, when you fall down, I normally say when you fall, you have two options. You realize I have fallen, you wake up, you dust yourself and you go on with the journey. Or you decide I have fallen. And because I have now you decide kujichafua kabisa. You decide to roll on the mud. And some of you, when you fall, that is what you do. You wallow there. You wallow, you wallow, you wallow. Meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Many of you are looking for success. Many of you want your things to, to go well. You want your way to prosper. You want to make your way prosperous. We are very, very busy looking for prosperity. The answer is in the word of God. It is not in how hard you work. Are we together? Are we together? It is not in how much you work. Let me tell you, the, the secret for your business is locked up in the word of God. The secret for your career is locked up in the word of God. But you don't spend time, you don't read it, you don't meditate on it day and night. So you will never know the secrets that are hidden. Somebody was saying, I think it was during either the, Friday, the Thursday interactive. Somebody said, if you want to hide anything from Africans, put it in a book. That's what the enemy has done. He has made sure we do not know the truths and the secrets that are hidden in the word of God. And he has made sure we do not read the word of God. That's a principle. Manna, food was there morning and evening. Joshua was told, meditate on it day and night so that you may observe to do according to all that is in written uh, therein. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Principle number two. Manna only fell where the cloud of God camped. And that means that's why we need the presence of God. 
the cloud and the pillar of fire by night we we learned the last time represented the presence of god and so the presence when the presence of god is with you when you have the presence of god with you let me tell you you will never lack a word he will be there to speak a word to you it doesn't matter what situation you are in it doesn't matter what circumstances are around you because the presence of god is with you you will be there he will have a word there will be a word for you there will be a word for the season there will be a word there will be a rema word for you for your particular and your specific situation So in order to survive the people had to move when God moved. Failure to do that meant that their source of daily sustenance would not be available. Today many believers are malnourished. I wish I told Simon before to get me a picture of somebody who is a malnourished. Mnajua naitwaje? There's a word. There's a word for somebody who is mal malnourished. Huh? You know somebody who has squash yako? They are very, very thin with a very, very big stomach. Many believers, many uh, Christians, spiritually speaking, have squash yako. Because they are not feeding spiritually. They are not getting a balanced diet. They are not feeding from the word. It is very very easy to stay away from church from weeks some even months There are people we have 52 weeks in a year sindio so that means we have how many Sundays 52 you need to ask yourself how many of the 52 Sundays do you go to church The truth is we do that when we do that we are cutting ourselves off from the spiritual uh, system of sustenance that god has put in place to resource our spiritual man you cannot just read your bible at home there's a, the scripture in hebrews that talks about do not forsake the coming together of the brethren as is the manner of some and i normally give the analogy of motoyakuni We are Africans. We are from Africa. We know what I'm talking about na moto ya kuni. Moto ya kuni is made up of a number of 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 planks of wood. True or false? So what happens when all the planks of wood are together? The fire keeps and each one of them has its own I mean each one of them is lit by the other and so the fire keeps burning. But what happens when you take one and you put it aside? Huh? What happens? It goes off. Why? You know when COVID happened, uh of course people started doing online churches. So sometimes you ask people why they don't come to church, they will tell you nilikuwa online. Can you tell your neighbor big lie? Yes. So many of them hide They started hiding on that I am I am following online. And we have enough online church meetings in this church. And I can tell you there are times we call somebody tunaitana na tunaitana. They they plug in. Are you kwapo? And they are busy doing other things. Are we together? So when I am saying big lie I know what I am talking about. And so you find that many believers have died spiritually because they did what they forsook the coming together of the brethren as is the manner of some when we are together we encourage each other when we are together we 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 protect each other And do you remember one time I showed you we did a illustration that time when you are not going to church If the enemy comes and hits you nobody will know you have been hit. And ana kugonga ngamoja ya kutosha. Akugonga ngimbili, ana kugonga ngapi? 
moja ya kutosha ya kukumaliza yani moja it, it takes, just takes you out why because you have you are not surrounded you are not protected and that's a strategy of the enemy and so we are saying um we are saying that manna only fell where god camped number 3 the people had a personal responsibility the people had a personal responsibility yes they were journeying with god yes moses was leading them and aaron they were there to give them instructions they were there to give them guidance but the people had a personal responsibility here we see that there was a personal responsibility of having to go out and collect the manna the manna was not finding them in the house but you see we have uh, we have i mean churches have raised a breed of believers that want everything to be done for them So we are not reading our bibles we will not take time to take our bibles and read for ourselves because we are expecting the pastor is reading so we have raised a breed of believers that are like what watoto wa zamani in olden days there was no serelac and there was no nun pastor mega used to give us a story uh, how the elder sister used to take they used to take bananas ile ya kuchomwa kwa kwa hiyo moto ya kuni unachoma ndizi sawa ikiiva the sister would take the banana chew it until it is a paste and then remove it from her mouth and feed him that is how the olden people were fed that's how they grew up hata ukiwaona wakitembea of course most of them are old i'm talking about the people who are now in their 60s their 70s that is how they were brought up But you see even in the church that is what has happened. We wait for the pastor to go read the word. Get the revelation, digest, then come and preach. And then we sit there. And whatever we are told, we open our mouths and we swallow. And many times we don't just swallow the bait. We su- we swallow what Pastor Moiga used to say, who clean and sinker. We even swallow things we are not supposed to swallow. So that is why you will be told drink anointing oil and you will take and drink. That is why you will be told this is holy water and you take and because we have abdicated our personal responsibility of going back to the word. We need to be like the Christians at Berea. They would go when the word of God is taught on a Sunday you go and sit down that's why i don't expect you to be sitting in church like i'm seeing some of you sitting like this ni ni vile tu hakuna recliner but right now you would be reclining you have no biro you have no notebook you have no pen you have no tab you are not even writing what i am saying you are believing everything i am saying and that is how we ended up with shakahola cause kazi yenu mutafutiwe mupikiwe i go buy come wash prepare cut huh? put it on the fire let it cook your work and then even eat even taking it and putting it in your mouth no you wait for me to put it in the mouth i chew it remove it and then give you your work is just swallow The Berean Christians would go home and check what we were taught today is it biblical is it true if the believers of today were doing that we would not be having shakahola we would not be having people drinking anointing oil we will not be having people eating grass we will not be having people presenting women presenting their naked bodies so that the pastor can anoint them with oil a microphone me complain are we together i'm talking about the things that are in churches so when i talk about malnourished believers that is what we are talking about people who don't know their left hand from their right hand why because they have abdicated their personal responsibility 
This was done daily. This is something you do daily. You have to go and see what is the word of God saying? What is God saying on a daily basis? Some of you, the only time you interact with the word of God or anything near God is Sunday when we come and gather here. You come to meet God here, you leave him here. When you go out that door, you are yourself. You are I, me, and myself until next Sunday. Can we continue? I'm at watch here, Apple. We cannot rely on yesterday's revelation or the speaking of God. Are we together? They had to go out every morning. And by the way, it was not, it, it, it must have been twice. Because for them to have the bread and the meat. Are we together? There was a personal responsibility to go for the bread and also to go for the meat. Everybody personally, there was nothing like kutumana, every person for themselves. Fend for yourself and for your household. There has to be a desire to want to know, what is God saying today? What is the current speaking of God, of God to us? What is the current speaking to God, to, of God to me as a person? What is the Lord saying to me in this season? In the season I am in. Because there is always a word for the particular and the specific season that you are in. We've come from learning about uh, times and seasons. Whatever season you are in, there is a word for that season. But what, had, what do we do? We, I mean, we depend on yesterday's revelation. Last week's revelation. Last year's, three years ago, five years ago. What is God saying to me in my current process? Yes, I'm going through a process. I am going through a painful process. God has a word for you in that particular process. Our journeys and our processes are not the same. Some of us are living on other people's words. So God gave a word to mercy. It was her word as she was waiting, as she was speaking, I mean, waiting on God. God gave her that word. It was hers. For her particular situation. Irene decides. Atahang na iyo. So wadia masi inakuwa ya nani? Na Emily the friend. They hang on that one. No, they are not going to look for. See we, they are eating. They are eating from what Masi was told. So most of us are walking other people's journeys. Instead of walking our journey with God. Because our journeys are not the same. Are we together? Yes, our journeys are not the same. We each have individual journeys that we are supposed to walk with God. Some of us um, have not sought God for the Rema word. We have not been going out to collect our manna or our Rema. It was a personal responsibility. Exodus 16, 16 says, this is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's needs. Your need are not your sister's need. Your needs are not your brother's need. Your need are not your brother's family's need. All our needs are different. What God is speaking to each one of us is very, very different. And so each one has to go out on their own. According to the number of persons, let every man take for those who are in his tent. So the only thing that happened is that a man was supposed to take care of his household. You could not take care of another man's household. You only took care of your household. Uh, Matthew 6 verse 11 in the amplified it says give us this day our daily bread this was jesus when he was teaching his disciples how to pray and he, i mean and one of the part of that prayer was teacher i mean give us our daily bread not weekly not monthly not yearly it was daily so that means there is something for you. There is something for God is saying to you every day. In Luke uh, 11 verse 3, it says the same thing. Give us this, uh, give us day by day 
our daily bread. We have a personal responsibility to go out and trust God for our daily provision. The other thing we need to see on this side, apart from the spiritual nourishment, one of the other things we have said is that God took care of their basic needs. So even for you, you have a personal responsibility to go out. To do what? To go out. And trust God for your daily provision. This thing of sitting somewhere. And sending messages to people. No. You go out and believe God. Let me tell you, people who go out, they never come back empty. And even if you come back empty, it might be just for a day. But you might discover the previous day you had made something that will sustain you this day that you didn't get anything. Every time you go out, God, the word of God talks about God blessing the work of our hands. The book of Proverbs 31 talks about the Proverbs 31 woman. It says she does not eat the bread of idleness. So we have a personal responsibility. You go out and you believe God for your personal provision. Are we together? Living one day at a time, full of confidence that our needs will be met on a daily basis according to our need. Some of us, why we have failed to work is we expect God to provide for the whole year and for the whole year, for the whole week. We don't know what it is to trust God one day at a time. And that's one of the things I have learned, to trust God one day at a time. Time. Sometimes you are believing God for finances. Sometimes it, has, it won't come all of it together. Sometimes it comes little by little. When the little you get, you receive it with thanksgiving and you use it. But what do many of us do? You get it and hold it. But me, I have learned. When I get what bill needs to be sorted, you release. It is as you release that you create room for God to bring more. God is not in the business of holding. Unataka yote ikai hapa. Provision ya mwezi mzima, ikuja na siku moja. And then you say, I'm sorted for the month. Hapo wakuna trusting God anywhere. Eh? Do you know what it is to live by faith? It is living one day at a time. And that's why God, he didn't, when God was dealing with the children of Israel, we don't see him bringing or raining all the food for the week. You know, he would have been giving them weekly. Inakuja yote Monday. Inawasot mpaka sato. No, he didn't do that. He made them go every, every day. They were trusting God at every step. You're starting a business. Start small. Go out that one day. Whatever you make, thank God. Honor God with what is his. Go out the, the second day. Step by step by step, you will build your business. You will build your career. And you will build whatever it is that you are doing. Amen. Where are we? Number four. Manna was provided for six days of the week and on the sixth day, double for the Sabbath. Exodus 16, 26 to 27. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. Now it happened that some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather, but they found none. God provided for their every need. We serve a God who is very compassionate and caring towards his people. But you notice the instructions were, they were to do it six days. And on the sixth day, they were to gather double. And if there is something that God has been speaking to us in the, in the recent past, the rebuke was uh, not taking his day, not taking the Sabbath day seriously. Are you seeing how God was particular? About his day. Are you seeing from this story? Huh? They were told they only go out six days. But the word of God is telling us. Those characters. They are always there. You have been clearly told. This is what you are going to do. They still went out. But when they went out. There was none. Number five. In the journey. Instructions are important. We are talking about walking with God. In the journey. Instructions are Tell your neighbor, in the journey, instructions are important. 
When you journey with God, he will keep giving you instructions at every stage, at every step. And that is what we see with the children of Israel. Exodus 16 verse 20 says, Notwithstanding, they did not heed Moses, but some of them left part of it until morning, and it bred worms and stuck, and Moses was angry with them. So they were just supposed to take enough for that day. But we see there were some characters that were very greedy. That wanted to take for tomorrow. They couldn't, they couldn't trust God. That the same God who has provided today will provide even tomorrow. And they would leave it. And what would happen? It bred worms and it stank. If you read verse 22 of chapter 16 to 24, it says, And so it was on the sixth day that they gathered twice as much bread. Two omas for each one. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Then, the, then he said to them, this is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest. A holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today. And boil what you will boil today. And lay up for yourselves all that remains to be kept until morning. So they laid it up until morning. As Moses commanded, and it did not stink, nor were there any worms in it. So you ask yourself, why is it the other days it was stinking, but this particular time it was, it was not stinking? It was because in the journey there will be instructions. They were not supposed to go out and gather during the Sabbath. And so God had taken care of that on the sixth day they were supposed to take twice. And so God pre preserved it. In Exodus uh, 26 verse 30 it says, Six days you, will, you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. Now it happened that some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather, but found none. And the Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my law? See, for the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he gives you on the sixth day bread for two days. Let every man remain in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the Sabbath day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Can you tell your neighbor, Sunday siyo siku ya kushikanisha to deal? It is the day of the Lord. It is the day of rest. Amen? We are in agreement. Number six and the last one. Manna was provided for the entire journey in the wilderness. We do not get a situation where they had nothing to eat. Actually, a time came when they got too bored. Later, a time comes when they got too bored of eating the same thing and they wanted a change of diet. But, in, but what we are saying is that God provided for them throughout their journey in the wilderness. In Joshua chapter 5 verse 12. Joshua chapter 5 verse 12 it says then the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land and the children of Israel no longer had manna but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year the handout the free food stopped and God uh, made sure that they ate the fruit of the land. So the time came when they had to go out and work. Tell your neighbor, they went out and worked. They went out and tilled the land. And in that year, they were able to eat the fruit of the land. So as we faithfully journey with the Lord, uh, we are not only assured of his provision, but also fulfillment of all that God has promised us. God promised to take them to the promised land and he actually did that. God was faithful throughout the journey and he kept his word to them and they are, were able to enter and eat the fruit of the land. And even for us, as we continue to journey with the Lord, one day at a time, one instruction here, another instruction there, we will surely see the fulfillment of the promises of God to us as individuals, to us as families, to us as a church. Amen? 
Amen. And that brings us to the end of our session this morning. The principle of manna. We've been able to learn the principle of manna. Of God providing throughout the journey. And taking care. And one of the things we have seen is that we have a God who is loving, who is very compassionate, who is very, very caring, and who takes care of everything that we need. But we have also seen that we have a personal responsibility to make sure that we are feeding ourselves. We are feeding ourselves with the word. Amen. And may God bless the reading of his word. Amen. So we've come to the end of our service and as we come to the end, we would like to give our offering. I would like to request um, Simon uh, to give us the, the pay bill number, uh, the ushers to wait on us in the spirit of excellence for those who are giving in cash um, as the praise and worship team uh, leads us or ministers to us in song. Amen. So for those who are giving by Mpesa, the pay bill number is on the screen. 247247 account is 880812. For those giving in cash, uh, the ushers are waiting on us as the praise and worship team uh, sings. And just take the mic and sing. You can sing. I know you can sing. Take the mic and sing.
as we come to a close, we would like to pray for our candidates. We have candidates that are sitting there, class eight, and some sitting.